Hey gang, Carl White here broadcasting actually from the studios today here at the secret headquarters of the Mortgage Marketing Animals. You're listening to Loan Officer Freedom, arguably the number one podcast in the world today for loan officers. And I put in that little bit there because I have the ever so lovely and talented uh, Mr. Steve Kyles, also a host of a, of a very, very, very popular podcast here in the loan office world. How you doing, Steve? Hey brother, great to uh, great to see you. Not argu- arguably, you are the number one host in the world for loan officers, and man, it's just so much fun uh, when we get a chance to get together. I get it's like two great minds. Just it's this. I feel like I'm playing pickleball <laughs> back yeah. and forth. <laughs> but give me your idea. What's your thought? Oh my gosh, that's so good. I'm going to implement it in my branch. You, you know so. what? Let's, let's let's agree. Let's agree to find something way more cool than pickleball. Maybe maybe I don't know. Like. <laughs> High level hey, tennis or something. Pickleball has like a resurgence right now, man. It's like okay, lot, okay, lot okay. I'll give you that. Stuff. Well, you're well, you're you're on the you're a hip and cool guy. So you know what the uh, you know what the, <laughs> you're like, the what youngsters is <laughs> you know what the youngsters are doing. See, I was gonna I was gonna talk about being like a shuffleboard game or or, or something, but uh, but did you know by the way? Well, first of all, you're listening to the right episode if you want to hear the pros and cons of being an in-house lender. Great but question. Did you yeah. know that the Shuffleboard Hall of Fame is located about 20 miles from my house? What? True I story. mean, oh my mind blown. True, actually, true I don't even know what I don't know what shuffleboard is. It's actually a pretty like, cool game. It's is that where you, cool you use the stick and you push it? You slide the thing. It's kind of like um, yeah, it's kind of yeah. like bowling, except you're you know, you got somebody standing on the other side and you're trying to knock their little pucks off. And oh man, next time I'm there, we'll have to go. Shuffleboarding. It's, a, it's actually a fun game. It, yeah. it all can decide, you know, <laughs> yeah. typically like on cruises, they'll have shuffleboard. On oh, the there you go. Yeah. Anyway. All right. Love it. So the pros and cons of an in-house lender. Somebody was asking me the other day, uh, Carl, how do I overcome the in-house lender? Mm. And I'll talk about how I answered him. Yeah, I really am excited to hear your conversation on this because I, I think there's, you know, I, we haven't talked there's, earlier, so I'm, I'm excited to hear what you have. Yeah, to there, say. there's pros and cons to it, right? It, it's it, yeah. it can be it's good and, it, and it's good for certain people and, and maybe not so good for other people. So so let's talk about the pros and cons. Um, so first of all, the pay to play can absolutely work being an in-house lender, yeah. right? Yeah. Absolutely, it can work. Um, if you're getting ready to go sign up for one. Uh, a, a contract, I would say, you know, just be careful to measure the results that you're getting, not the traffic, but like, like what are the actual results? And I would recommend at least in, in the beginning, not to do a long-term contract. I'd probably do it for about 90 days to start with. And, and if they were to say, Hey, we're only going to do it. If it's a, uh, you know, a two-year contract, I'd probably pass on it. Yeah. But but uh, but like a ninety day or so contract, and if they've already got somebody, why are they replacing that person? Great question. Yeah. And how many loans did that person close from the end being an in house lender last year? Because mm-hmm. hey, in house well, lenders I, I, yeah. capture about twenty two percent as a general rule, twenty two percent of the deals. That so means seventy eight percent of the deals don't close with the in house lender. Well, I, hey, and I, I love the, I, you're hundred percent right. You don't want a long-term commitment going in and you got to quickly measure those results because Carl, what we've seen and, and look, I've been guilty of it too. I've actually got two of them right now that I'm in, we have in, we're the in-house lender for. And you know, what's interesting is, is sometimes it's easy to forget. It's what are the metrics this month and next month? It's mm-hmm. not just the access. Hey, we'll give you access to our agents. It's what are you doing with the access mm-hmm. and are they converting into, you know, it goes back to, are you getting the number of leads? Are you getting the number of credit pools? And are those credit pools turning into closings? And if you're not real careful, you can get 90, 120 days out and say, oh my gosh, we've only closed insert in X number of loans. We hadn't even paid for the marketing agreement. Yeah. And so the key on those is the monthly metric with the ability to get out in a 30 day window. So yeah, I would a hundred percent agree. Being an in-house lender isn't, I mean, like I've done it and, 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 um, and I would say, so this is not, don't be an in-house lender podcast, right? This sure. is not, but this is a pro con Yep. And, and there are pros and there are cons. And I'm, I'm going to go over probably more of the cons in the beginning, and then we'll cover some of the pros. But, you know, I find like from an in-house lender that 
like five to 10% of the agents in that office are doing most of the closings, you know, the old 80, 20, mm-hmm. uh, it's actually probably more than that. It's probably like 10, 90, that 10% is probably doing 90%. And what I've generally found is that the, 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 what we, what Steve, what you and I call the qualified real estate agents, those that are closing eight buyer sides or more in the last 12 months, yeah, they're definitely going to be in the top five or 10% of the agents that's doing all, you know, most of the business in that office, they tend to be a little bit of a uh, uh, renegade or rebel Mm -hmm. uh, to the in-house lender. In other words, like, like the, like the, the, it tends to be, now this is just a general rule. There's exceptions, of course, but it tends to be that the, the broker that owns the real estate shop is going to pressure his or her lower producers Mm-hmm. to use the in-house lender. Yeah. But the higher producers, they leave. They don't alone. want to mm-hmm. pressure them. So they leave or, or hassle them because they'll leave. They can go anywhere. Like there's any broker shop in town would love to have these top producing real estate agents working for them. And, and, um, you know, so that they're, 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 they're not going to, they're not going to, they're not going to rock the boat. Yeah. yeah they're, they're not going to rock the boat. Gonna, and, yeah. and I find that like, like these top producers, sometimes think, well, look, the broker's already making pretty good money on me. I'm going to use whatever loan officer I want to. And I'm actually, some of them actually go out of the way not to use the in-house lender, Mm -hmm. you know, just cause, you know, you're not going to tell me where I'm going to send my people, you know, kind of thing. And so it tends to be the lower producing agents that are referred to us that are tend to be uh, lower experience, more questions, uh, more drama, uh, cause it's more important that each and every deal, clo- every, and every deal is important to close, but for them, yeah. it's like, if it doesn't close my, if it pushes the next month, for some reason, I can't make my own mortgage payment. And mm-hmm. so there tends to be a little bit more drama. And so, so it's not like you would think where, well, they closed, you know, 50 deals, uh, uh real estate deals a month where well, you're not going to have a shot at most of those yeah. likely. Yeah. Right. Hey, I, th- I think there's something you got to consider too when you're looking at do I do I become a part of a realtor organization and be their preferred lender? You know, you got to be asking. I've got one right now um, in the market that I'm in, and I actually have four offices, Carl. The thing that people don't realize is you have to ask how much of your business is relocation versus how much is street business. So when you're evaluating, is this a good use of my time? I love what you said earlier. You got to ask, what are the past results? Because they'll say, well, we closed 100 transactions. Great. What did the previous in-house lender close? What was their opportunity and what was their conversion? And, and why to, am I? Why are you asking me to be here? That's it. Yep. Instead of keeping them on board. And, and just being real candid with the conversation. Hey, he's not showing up. Maybe they don't like him. Maybe he's dropped some balls. All of that is normal conversation. Yeah. But then also, what terms are you looking for? Hey, if you had a win-win walking in, what would make it a win for you and your agents in such a way that they could get behind having an in-house lender? Because if we can make it about them, we're going to get a higher conversion. The next one is this. What's the investment? I don't say cost, it's investment. Hey, listen, if you're asking for a $2,000 investment, what's your commitment to ensure we're closing enough loans to make it uh, a profitable partnership? And 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 I think these are the business kind of conversations you have to do. You also, hey, broker, what are you willing, to, are you willing to get behind it 100%? Because Carl, I've got one we worked with in the past, she was like, yeah, we're excited to have you, but then wouldn't promote any of the things we're doing. And if you ask for the list, ask for the agents, it's real held to your chest. And we just realized real quick, that's not going to work. A partnership is exclusive, open door access and encouragement to all agents, especially the top producers, or else you're not going to see success. And and we forgot to do this too on a couple of them. We weren't measuring their street business versus relo. Um, if they're a 70% relocation shop, you got to realize your opportunity on the street business is very, very, very small because even if the agents know, like, and trust you, you're only going to get a shot at maybe half of those transactions. So you got to look at the metrics of what's there. Wait, wait, what, um, do you, what do you mean by street business versus uh, Relo? Yeah. So like, I, well, I'll tell you right now, I'm a, I'm in a partnership with Weikert Realtors, great company here in the Houston market. We got four of the offices, but they're 70% 
relocation. So their street business, which means the business that their agents get without it being relocation business, it's it's a relationally referred. Yeah, but what's what's the difference between as, as far as me being the lender? If if they're a he- if they're heavy if they're seventy percent relo they've got it re- like if 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 a major corporation relocates their people they already have their in house lender I that got it. relocation I got it. company does I got it okay. so like if if your real estate office is helping with a lot of relocation you're not going to get a shot at those you'll get a save a deal once in a while you really have to focus on what business are the agents closing that are relational leads not relocation leads got it got it yeah. well you know the one thing I found. When we were an in-house lender, and uh, and and uh, I personally don't have any of those set up at this time. Not that I wouldn't be open to it, right? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I found, as a general rule, that they kind of treated me like a rented, like a rented mule. You know, like, <laughs> it, it, and what I mean by that yeah. is like they those relationship. It was like they were the ones writing me a check. Yeah, yeah. You know, instead of me writing them a check, because like. They were a little bit more, I don't know, sassy, sparky mm-hmm. to me. You know, yeah. it's like, hey, whoa, whoa, whoa. I thought we were partners here. Yeah. You know, yeah. like, like what's going on? Whereas the relations I had, relationships I had where I wasn't the in-house lender, uh, you know, it those, I don't know, those just seemed like like real relationships instead of mm-hmm. a paid friendship, you know, kind of thing. Cause yeah. you'd think the in-house lender would get treated with more respect. I just didn't find that to be true, oddly enough, which really, yeah. which really surprised me that, uh, yeah, it, it wasn't good. And I tell you another issue with it, with it is like, if you're a loan officer and you're sitting in that office, number one, most of the agents that are in the office, well, they're not out showing homes. And so they tend to be the lower yes. producers. The higher yes. producers typically don't come to the office because they're, they're out working selling. That's right. And, yeah. And so the, the broker wanted us to be in the office all the time because uh, he or she wanted us to work on their bottom 80% mm-hmm. that's doing 20% of the business. They, they yeah. wanted us to bring to the training. Uh, hey, bring lunch, train my agents. I'll and get I'm okay all the with struggle that. bunnies. Yeah, I'm okay well, with it, but, but, but with it, the struggle bunnies, that's the word. That's, well, what what you what you're saying right now is uh, my experience 100. percent Hey, listen, we're going to put all of our new agents. We want them to go through your training. And what ends up happening is is they're one out of ten, one out of twenty may actually make it. But that's where you get trapped in the busyness, not effectiveness a cycle. It's like, hey, they got me busy. I'm doing. Two trainings a week. I'm showing up every single day, but I, I agree with you hundred percent. The top producers are not going into the office on a daily basis. They may go to the team meeting, but they're not the ones that are showing up on Monday and Tuesday yeah. and Wednesday. Those are the ones that are just, they don't have anything else to do. They're coming in to check things out. Hey, let me say one thing. I just had one that I canceled and this is uh, you and I were sitting together. We just finished a boot camp, and the guy said, Hey, let's, let's get some things moving. And, and I was all excited. Um, a great producer. And you know, what's interesting because we measured results really quick, Carl, um, What I did, the mistake I made on this last in-house position was that all of the leads he was sending were Zillow leads. Um, We walked in with the understanding we were going to get their street business, not paid leads. And that didn't happen. And within 45 days, I I canceled the relationship because it wasn't worth the investment. Uh, In other words, they were, they were, instead of giving you their floor business. Yeah. That what they were doing, they were running, they were buying leads off of uh, hundred percent Zillow. Yeah. Zillow Zillow is where a lot of them are doing it. Uh, Sync leads. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and so what we started with, because we measured the activity quickly every week, it was like, Hey brother, want to run through the numbers. Here's the people that have come in. Here's what we've done. They absolutely were not converting. So you've got to make Make sure that you're like, if somebody's bringing you in for a paid relationship, but it's Zillow leads, sync leads, internet leads, I would encourage you. It, it, it I don't see a lot of value in that because you're scalable. chasing your tail. Yeah, yeah. And you're making a lot of calls for not converted leads and you just got to evaluate it quickly. Hey, well, I'll give you all my other business as well. Great. Run a quick trial. Doesn't work. Get out quick. Don't sit in that thing long. Yeah. So. Yeah. And you know, a- another issue with sitting in the office is like if I'm calling the listing agent on my deals and trying to get their business too, and they find out that I'm sitting there, you know, in the, I don't know, insert in, you know, Remax or whatever. If I'm in the Remax 
and I'm calling a Weikert agent and I go, yeah, oh, yeah you just send your, just send your borrowers down here to my office over yep. at the Remax store or yep. vice versa. Right. Both, yep. both, both great companies, you, you know, agents aren't likely to do that. Just like if, if my title company was located in ABC mortgage company, I wouldn't use that. I wouldn't refer to that title company if they're in a mortgage office. Right. I just, I just wouldn't point. do it. Yeah. And, and so that's a, that's a, that's another issue, you know, back to this 80, 20 thing. You know, one thing that I found is the brokers want me to take the bottom 80 <laughs> is doing 20%. They want me to work on those to get those 80 up to the top 20. That's doing 80% of the business, right? So 80%, 80% of the, of the realtors are doing 20% of the business and 20% of the realtors doing 80% of the business, right? So they want, they don't want me to work with the top agents. They want me to bring the bottom agents up to the top agents. And, and I tell them, I said, look, me, you and Pharaoh's army is not going to make that happen, right? It's just not going to happen. So, and, and I told him, I said, look, I always have to have this conversation with them. And some of them get it and some of them don't. Would you rather me, like if I was talking to you, I said, Steve, let me take, I'd say, Steve, is your office like mine where 80% is doing 20% and 20% of the agents are doing 80% of the business? They always say yes. I go, cool. Well, Steve, we can do one of two things here, buddy. A, we can work on the bottom 80 that's doing 20% and double their business. We'll get another 20. Now we're up to 40, right? Nothing wrong with that. Or we can focus on the 20 that's doing 80% of the business, help them double their business. We get another 80. Now we got 160. So mm. one way we got 40, mm. the other way we got 160. Steve, which mm. one do you want to work on? Dude, that's if brutal. Steve says 40, then I go, that's you know what? Partnership. That sounds like a great plan, brother. Yeah. We're probably not going to be a good match. Wow. Right, just being honest with them yeah. yeah, and focus on doubling, you know, working with the 20 that's doing 80, helping them out, helping them get another 160. And those are real numbers. Like that's not, that's not a, a sales pitch. Like that's, that's what's likely to happen. Now, do some of those bottom 20 rise above the noise? Well, sure. Cause Steve, you and I both started at the bottom 20, right? When we first sure. got in the business, mm -hmm. we're in the bottom 20. A lot of people listening to this today, a lot of people have, well, I got this one agent. No, I got this one agent too. Right. But I don't have dozens of, of, of agents that have done yeah. that, where I've had dozens and dozens at this point in my career, hundreds, you know, of agents that uh, that were the top twenty and and really moved the needle on them. So you want to you want to make sure to clarify with that broker very early in the in the, in the conversation that uh, if you're going to be an in-house lender, you want to work with the twenty that's doing eighty. Mm -hmm. Like let them get let them give you the list mm -hmm. of, of those agents, like share their production yep. and, and and make those introductions. Those are the people you mm -hmm. want to work with. Yeah, I love it. Hey, and well, and that's a great perspective. I love how you just roll that out because if they say no, I want you to work on the bottom eighty percent. It really that's isn't going to be a great. That's a red flag. That, that's not yeah, a red that's, flag. That's a nuclear. That's, you got to go. Yeah, that's a because they, they they want you to do the busy work. And you know what's so funny as you're talking, I I, I did this in so many. You know, I'm like, I'm going to help you grow your business. I'm going to grow your agents. No, you're not. No, you're not. No, no, they no, you're they, not. they struggle in. They're going to continue to struggle. You need to find the unicorns. But look, hey, let me flip this too. And what I would encourage, knowing what I know now you don't really need the access get the qualified agent list you can get a report of who's their top producers and just do thor's hammer without the access now so it gives you an opportunity to have a rented space for one of your loan officers to land i like it i'm good same here but you actually don't have to pay to get to their top agents yeah. and so i'm a bigger fan of just thor's hammer the ones you want because you're going to find if they got 20 of them you're only going to find that you connect with maybe five seven eight anyway based on personalities well and if, if they got 20 and, agents you're not gonna have eight doing good business. no no no. i meant like 20 top producers oh you're i not got to yeah. connect mm -hmm. with all 20 of them anyway yeah. you know you think well you got 20 i'm gonna get them all no you're not they your personalities are too different but mm -hmm. you will get two four six maybe and yeah. so I'm a bigger fan of just go do Thor's hammer, get them, make the phone calls, meet with them outside of it. You'll make more money. Hey, now let's address this real quick. Uh, what do I do if I'm working with an agent whose company has an in-house lender? That has no effect on, on how I conduct yeah. my business. Cause that, that in-house lender is only getting 22% of the business. 100% of the in-house lender is likely not uh, doing the follow-up, the, the daily success plan that we do yep. Monday through Thursday, yep. where we, we don't just get more agents referring to us using our daily success plan, we actually get more leads to refer back to the agents. Yes. So we develop those relationships that way. So, so that's what I do. And, 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 you know, back to what you were talking about just a second ago, you know, like, like, let's say you've got a broke small broker office has got 50 agents in it. Yeah. 
and, and some smaller than that, but just say 50 agents out of that 50, probably five are going to be qualified. You know, five are going to be closing eight buyer sides or more in the last 12 months. And so instead of, instead of jumping into a room of 50 and getting through the clutter of the other 45, mm -hmm. what if you just found out who the five was and just called those five and try to develop a relationship? Because odds are they're not using the in-house lender. Now, the exception to that, if the broker is also one of the top producers for the office, oftentimes they'll be using the in-house lender yep, like the actual broker. But but most of the other top producers uh, are, are not. And it's uh, it's just as easy to uh, to identify who's that 5% that's doing all the business in that office and just connect with them directly using what we call the Thor's Hammer script, which is a little script that we use to connect up with real estate agents to, to get them to meet with us, uh, whether it's on the phone or, or Zoom or in person, and then using a, a very uh, unique conversation to get them to start actually referring us deals. And it has a very high success rate. And it's, it, 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 it's likely to be just as easy just to do that rather than you know being somebody's uh, in-house lender. I love it. Hey, well, if somebody says, Carl, what are you talking about with the Thor's Hammer script and your process? Where do they go? Somebody's listening. Uh, we can, we can map it out for you, actually. If you just go to uh, like the freedomclubdemo.com, freedomclubdemo.com, we'll actually get on the call with you for like for a full hour and yeah. do a one-on-one -on -one and walk you through the actual script. It's not a sales pitch. It's like, we'll walk you through the actual scripts uh, of what we're doing. So when you go to there, it'll ask you a couple of questions just so we can best prepare for the call because uh, depending upon your situation, uh, we have different scripts for different situations. So we'll ask yep. you a couple of questions about your, what your situation is. And then you just, it takes you to a calendar. You just pick a time and day that works for you. No credit card or anything like that. And, uh, and we'll, and we'll map it out for you. Hey, so I think we, you know, we, we've, we've talked a little bit about here, like a lot of cons and I would lean toward con myself of, of, yep. of not doing it, uh, where I would do it. If I have a, if I, if I'm a branch manager and I have a loan officer, that I, I think uh, might stand to do okay and just need a little bit of a head start or a boost, I might would consider putting them in an office. But, but and this is going to sound contrary, if I was a loan officer and I was just getting started, I would not be put in one of those branches myself. Mm -hmm. I just, I wouldn't do it because you're going to do better if you just do Th the Thor's hammer, the thing I just talked about at, at yep. uh, freedomclubdemo.com. If you just do that daily success plan, it's, it's, it's incredibly higher odds that you're going to have much, much better, faster, easier, cheaper, uh, more cool results mm -hmm. than uh, than being an in-house lender, uh, but but there are there 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 are some that do it successfully. But I would say by far there's more that don't do it successfully, yeah. which doesn't mean that they can't be pulled off because it, it totally can. But it it would not be my first choice. I would agree. Uh, it would not be my for, first choice. Any 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 uh, on the well, pros? Uh, hey, uh, on the on the pros, I, I like it. If you're like the way I use it is we we have now have four offices in four different areas in our market, and so I like using it as rental space. It solves a need. Um, I would agree with you 100. percent If you're brand new, don't go into an office because you know what it does, Carl. I, and me too. This was the lesson learned that I learned is you're intoxicated with the busy. Hey, I'm always in there. I'm always stopping by. Hey, I just popped by nine, you know, or two offices today that are my preferred lenders. The challenge with that is there's more a more effective way. Um, and it really goes back to the qualified agent. It, we in QAs, new qualified agents, it, like you're you're looking for the new qualified agents that you're having relationships with, you're having appointments with, you're closing for commitment. And we find that that's the number one activity that brings you the first fast results. Um, I like them if uh, your broker is fully behind you uh, and the broker is a producer and that broker is using you. I like that. Um, or if the manager of that office is solely committed to you, like for us, we've got a lot of commitment with all four of the managers at the offices because they're funneling it. Typically the manager, which is crazy, um, are it, the producing managers are the top producers of that office. So I like it when it, when, when the people at the top are producing, because they're the ones actively referring you. Other than that, I think most of the times we find they don't, they don't work. Um, but you know, you just got to look at the results and that'll, that'll tell yeah. you.
look, look, look at, look at the results and expected yeah. results. And uh, I have seen that work. It seems some that work out. I, the ones I've seen work out best is where, like, let's say, I mean, Steve, you and I are good friends, right? Oh yeah. So let's say if I was a real estate agent and you're the loan officer and, and we have the kind of relationship that you and I have, then I've seen those work out fine with that. Like, mm-hmm. like, like we're not, we're not, we're not, you know, it's like we're friends first. Like, yep. let, let's say I, I've been closing loans for this broker for, 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 you know, six months, three months, nine months, a year. And we've developed a true, like cool working relationship here. Those seem to work out better than if I'm just calling real estate offices or I find out somebody and I just call them up and we, yeah. our first deal together is that in-house. We haven't actually worked together first. Those, those tend not to work out so well mm-hmm. and never, 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 ever, ever, never, ever, ever. How often? Never, 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 ever, never, never be the second one. And I was about they, to they, say that I was just about to say, do not do this. If they have other in-house, that's a hundred percent. We're on the yeah, same th- page. Yeah. Now you're just being a sucker. Oh yeah. hundred percent. They're just going to yeah. take your money. Cause they take it, your money. It, yeah. It, that, that never, I've never once seen that work yeah. out. Always, always keep in mind that you always keep in mind that you're the prize. You're the prize. There's a thousand of them. There's one of you. You're the prize. You're the prize. So uh, good stuff, man. You think we covered it? I think we did. Great, great right, conversation. Cool. Hey, so uh, if you'd like us to, well, of course you'd like us to. So let's not even say if you would like, let's just go. This is the biggest no brainer ever. Take the energy that we have here at this time of year and do something with it. Do not squander the, 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 the beginning part of the year, the first quarter of a year. Don't squander it. Use this energy. And so we'll like to map out exactly who to call, what do you call, and different ways to bring in new business. And we'll do it for you for absolutely free. The best way you can demonstrate to help people is to actually help them. And we'll do it, well, for free. If you just go to freedomclubdemo.com, freedomclubdemo.com. Again, a couple questions so we can best prepare for the call. We'll get on the one-on-one call with you. You pick the time and the date that works best for you, and we'll map it out to you. No questions asked. So I think uh, uh, don't don't even think about it. I know you've heard me say this before. Just do it. If you haven't, it's been a while since you've done one. Do it again. The situation's changed. A different set of activities. Would love to map it out for you. Freedomclubdemo.com. Appreciate everybody. Steve, love you, brother. You're an outstanding dude. And we'll talk to the rest of you when you call in. Bye-bye. 